This is Hannibal from TheHannibalTV.com. I'm with legendary both wrestler, shooter, and belt maker extraordinaire Reg Park. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here and I'll see everybody again. Try to do this every year. Are you still making belts in 2019? I am. Uh, everything I make now is uh, its like working on an antique car. I make, make my uh, signature uh, belt, uh, my uh, winged eagle bar belt, and people love it. And uh, so we make a few of those. And, uh, and also we've got all, all kinds of other belts. So I quit making them for the... Uh, Active people, because uh, you know, as you as you're watching WWE now, the, all their belts now are all completely different from what I used to make. But uh, I'm still up, still up and going. What do you think of it now? Like uh, Daniel Bryan, I guess, had a vegan belt made, and John Cena had the swirly belt. What do you think about wrestlers being able to? take a belt and customize it for themselves now do you think that takes away from the credibility of a title oh i thought we had a hell that was a hell of a hoot <laughs> so i called my my guys i said who made that wooden belt for them <laughs> and it was a wooden belt because it was uh, he didn't want he didn't want anybody destroying uh, cattle out there and uh, and make it a regular style so he made it out of wood and, it, and it's i I haven't seen it myself, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what it looks like. <laughs> Do you, what would happen in the old days if a wrestler told the promoter, I want to have my own belt, I don't like the belt that you, ha you have designed for me? Well, uh, I've had some of them, uh, yeah, I've had the uh, Vachon brothers up in uh, Montreal. They had to have their own belts, you know, the pictures of them. But... Uh, it, uh, I had a lot of uh, belts made, and for wrestling, uh, and the wrestlers would get a little, a little bit of a tizzy there, was some business going on, and they'd say, uh, give the promoter the sign, and they'd take off with the belt. So I get a call a few days later, the promoter says, say, so-and-so uh, 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 left here and he left with the belt. Could you make me another one? I said, gladly. <laughs> <laughs> We had, uh, I had one when I was in Florida. Terry Funk. So, this nice, beautiful belt I made. And, uh, and I'm watching the match now. First thing to do, Terry, Terry rips this belt off the wheel we had it on. Jumps out of the ring and wraps that thing around that telephone post. So you know that the damn thing fell apart in 100 pieces. So, Terry comes back and so, says, What are you doing? What? just made that belt. Oh, he said, you can make another one now. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And speaking of the Vachon brothers you brought up, who would have won in a shoot between Stu Hart and Mad Dog Vachon? Well, when they were in their prime, it would have been, uh, it would have been a close match. Yeah, they're, both of them were good. I was, uh, I was uh, booked at uh, in Vancouver when I first started, and I and who's in my who's my opponent? Stu Hart, and he was like a he actually grabs me, takes me down, and head scissors me, so my head's sticking up over here, and he goes, boom, he goes my nose, blood all over, and it's, uh, to imitate Stu, and say, had a little bit tender around the top there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> So, and though I never got invited to the dungeon, as a matter of fact, I I'd stay away from there. You get hurt. Did you ever hear about the story of the rib Owen Hart played on Stu when he called Stu impersonating you, pretending like he wanted to challenge uh, Stu to a fight? Oh yeah, I heard that story many times. That was quite a quite a. Uh, it was it was really funny because uh, you know it was my name and all that stuff. And he could he could uh, he could imitate Stu. Of course, he could, uh, Owen he was a he was a, power, he was a ribber all, all the time. He was in England. And he'd come he'd come in at a ring, toilet paper hanging out of his shorts, and there were pretty people laughing. And of course, he'd go like, uh, "What are you laughing at?" But he would be like that. He says, so he says, 
parents too. I got to, uh, I think I can take you now. You know, uh, get a little older. And, uh, the students said, uh, "You come right down here, and we'll see." <laughs> 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 he was, he was, uh, he had a he had a piece of the action in, in uh, Seattle when I, he started me out, and then I, he sent me sent me out to Seattle for my first first territory that I was in. And, but he said, uh, you know, let me put this guy down here. He'd have a, he said, let me show you one of my my favorite whole things here. And he'd grab me and he'd throw that uppercut. And, throw it in and I don't know, I just, I just, okay, yeah, okay, Stu, I think I got it now. He must have did this like 20, 30 times. I got. I looked and I was going to the restroom. I looked. I looked like a robin. My chest was all red. Everything. I got. Packed my bags and put my short clothes on. And then uh, off we went to the airport. And then it was the next day. I was in Seattle. Wow. So it was, it was uh, quite a. We had. Uh, I think they put me in. The, what was it? Uh, yeah, it was a tag match. Tex McKenzie. Well, Tex McKenzie was about your size. He was a big, tall fellow. And I had to have one of these uh, fancy jackets made that I wore in the ring. So I got my jacket on, and uh, we're getting in there, and then uh, the announcer announces me first. So as, as he does, he, uh, Tex McKenzie grabs a hold of my arm like he's going to go like, yeah. And he lifted that thing up so far that he tore the damn sleeve off of my jacket. Oh, wow. I said, Tee. I just had that thing made. <laughs> I wanted to show it off. And <laughs> so anyway, what, uh, let's see what other kind of stories I could tell you. What was the favorite match you had in your career? Well, I was uh, my favorite, one of my favorite heels was uh, Mad Dog Vachon. It's one of the best ones. He would knock you down and get you in the corner. And said, "Get up and fight, you so and so, or I'll kill you." And you know, oh, you know, people in the ringside would just be frightened to death. And if he jump out of the ring, they'd sit there like you know, scared. To, scared the hell out of those people. <laughs> And you, of course, designed the winged eagle belt that Hulk Hogan wore through his largest run. He claimed in his book that he sweated a lot, and he actually sweated through 25 belt leathers a month, which is pretty exaggerated, but could, can you lend any credibility to that statement? Uh, I don't... Uh, that's, that, that's a likely story, because I've never seen... Uh, leather might get a little stiffer and stuff because you wet it and dry it out, wet it and dry it out. But I don't, I don't think there's anything. I've, uh, I've seen belts come back to me after 30 years. The 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 the, the gold plating would be kind of wear off in places, you know. But the leather with uh, the, you know, it's a tech, double leather to the back and front. So it was, it was, they were they were pretty sturdy. And I got a story now with the. The people from China have uh, make these belts now, they, and it looks like plastic. And I told them, I said, seriously, I said, uh, Chinese grow cows now with plastic skin. You know, that's the, what, what they use for the belts. So. so since you actually made that belt, how many of those uh, belts did you make for the WWE specifically uh, of that exact design? Was there only ever one, or was there numerous? I'd say numerous. I was making them for uh, the Hulkster. He was giving them away for presents. Okay. So I don't know, there was some them, maybe, uh, I don't know, six or eight or nine of them maybe. And then uh, when the uh, ultimate uh, warrior was the champion there, he'd have different colored outfits on. They'd call me up, the warrior next week's going to have a turquoise uh, suit on. We need a belt to turquoise. Well, okay. Uh, 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 and they said, well, he's coming out there with a green outfit on. And a uh, red outfit, he's uh, going in with it. about maybe four or five colors that we went through. Same belt, different color leather. Interesting. And I'm guessing that you probably don't have any social media. Um, no. I... You do have a website, though, maybe for your belts? We do, yes, I do. 
All you got to do is take your little phone, to Google Reggie Parks, and you'll see my whole life history and all the belts I've made and what I've done, all my awards, uh, my awards. Uh, a few years ago here, right at the Cauliflower Alley Club convention, they awarded me the, the champ, my champion boss man, Ed Schumann, and the boys got together and they made me a belt, beautiful belt. King of belts. And I took that home and I mounted it on a board. I call it like my fish on a board. I hang it up on a wall. Now, since then, I've hung up several of them, all different. That's my, my belts. I got neighbors want to come over and look at my museum. Wow. <laughs> well, hopefully, I can uh, check it out sometime. I think you live in Tucson, right? Yes. I just came from uh, being in Arizona for a few days. It's a beautiful state. I may have to move there one day, but I see you've got the uh, WrestleMania shirt on. Do you still follow the uh, WWE product? Uh, yes, I do. I see the uh, difference in the, pails, in the belts now. They've been making them uh, in the style that they have to be done in China or whatever they do. There's a bunch of jewels and everything. and Just the way with the, with the etching system I had uh, with my... Uh, business there years ago we couldn't we can't do that now anymore so he's got a uh, different kind of thing. we got a, a motorcycle place that has these uh, water cutters and all they see in the metal and they can do they can do amazing things well oh thank you guys and uh, appreciate it appreciate it again and uh, hi to everybody well I appreciate see you it. next year yeah hopefully we'll see you next year and you'll do catch up with us again thank you very much